me here. Um, just a quick bit of background. Uh, I started Metafilter.com, uh, one of the first community web blogs in '99. Been around for 11 years. Uh, it does about 20 million page views a month, uh, and it's like got four employees, so it turned into a thing. Um, I'm a bit of a data nerd myself. Uh, I track every run as one run keeper. I bought one of the Wi-Fi scales as soon as it came on the market. I tracked every bike ride I've taken since 2006, about 10,000 miles, and have the wattage and heart rate data to prove it. So in 2008, uh, gas hit a bit over four bucks a gallon. I drove that big truck you see there. Uh, one of my uh, the programmer that works with me on Metafilter lives about an hour away, and we sort of co-work a couple days a week. So we were driving 60 miles each way a couple times a week. He had just got a Prius. He was kind of obsessed with miles per gallon. He was wondering if it would like stay steady. Um, I was just trying to you know figure out uh, how much lifestyle change is it take to go from, uh, this truck was rated for 16 city and 20 on the highway and I was getting about 18. So like if I had to, how much lifestyle change does it take to go up to 20 miles per gallon? And getting two miles per gallon more, how much money do you save per tank um, from having to get your next tank? So uh, we originally were just going to build some little tiny app, you know, that run my iPhone that I could run when I got was filling up. Um, and then we were, and then he wanted to track his as well, so we're like, let's just make like a little multi-user app. We had all this code from Metafilter, so we made this thing called Fuely um, to track uh, multiple cars and your fuel ups each time. And I also got this thing called a scan gauge. Uh, it works with like any car made after 1995 or so. It's about 100 bucks. You plug it in, it gives you real-time data on anything having to do with your engine, including um, your fuel efficiency. So it's like a Prius, it gives you kind of like a like a really rudimentary, that little 2.1 miles per gallon is like real time if you're born at that time or you're sitting still at a, at a stoplight. Um, but so you can see exactly, you basically have to drive, drive like a grandma to really get like better mileage. I mean, you have to, it takes a lot of uh, mellow driving. <laughs> so I eventually did, after a couple tankfuls, I kind of got up to about 20 mile an hour average. Um, so I tried, so I sort of reflected on that, and you know, I kept measuring for the next two years. I still own that car. Um, going from 18 to 20, yeah, going from 18 to 20 miles per gallon required constant vigilance. Like you had to, like you could almost not run the radio. You have to think about, <laughs> you have to think about every stop, every start. Take the freeway as much as possible. Uh, you know, everything has to be at speed limit or below. Optimally, you know, anything over 65, you're wasting gas. Um, and then in the end, when you calculate what what would those two miles per gallon in a 20 gallon tank actually net you, it comes out to about six bucks. So. Uh, I took economics as a kid, you know, and I remembered opportunity cost. And <laughs> so I was like, hey, 18 is not that bad, and I have six dollars not to concentrate all the time. <laughs> so the, the site wasn't a total loss. We, um, I mean, you know, my personal experimentation. Uh, we also have uh, 40,000 drivers, 50,000 cars, almost a million fill-ups, and everything's public because we didn't want to have privacy problems. We just said, hey, you got to, you know, own up to it. Um, I was recently in the market for my first luxury car, and it came in a diesel, and I just went off the data in the wild of every diesel version of this BMW taps out about 25 miles a gallon, and there's the V8, which is like 13 to 16 miles a gallon. So I ended up getting a diesel, and I'm getting 24-ish. Um, it's great. So uh, these are lessons learned from tracking 40,000 other people, including myself. After about 10 fill-ups, you pretty much know what your average is and what your driving habits are. And we, we get emails from people uh, they are kind of bummed that they really, you know, after six months of not really paying attention to it, they really tried really hard and they got five more miles per gallon, but it didn't change their average. And they were like, where's the motivation? Um, so we've been playing with like showing short averages, like the last five fill-ups as a moving average, just to give people a little bit of motivation. Uh, an obvious takeaway was the easier data entry, the easier data entry is, the more data we are getting. We've eventually gone to a one-line SMS, and now like, it's gone through the roof usage. It's just so easy. Before you had to like write down a receipt, bring it home, pull up a web browser, go to the website, and then we made an iPhone um, web version that was pretty good, but the SMS is really going to kill it. Um, 
a tough thing for us, and I think for anyone doing something like this, is it's really slow data collection. Like, I only fill up my gas tank once every two weeks or so. Uh, when you sign up, you don't really have a receipt with you, so you have to wait two weeks, remember to come back to the site. If you're tracking by your odometer, we measure by difference, and like your second tank is only start showing you data, so it's basically nothing to do for two weeks to a month after you sign up, because it's really hard to keep people motivated, or even to remind them that, you know, hey, you signed up, and we exist. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the whole thing I've taken away from is just the opportunity cost versus, you know, lifestyle change. Um, I realized, you know, six dollars is a little more completely changing my <coughs> driving habits 24-7. And that's it. Um, we're just going to open up for questions. We'll do, you know, five, five or six minutes of questions, and um, unless it's needed, I'm, I, I won't, don't think I'll moderate too much. So just, but stand up and speak loudly, and then maybe even repeat the question. Okay. okay. I don't know. What about the tangible things, or less tangible things like climate change, global warming, kind of that, you know, versus the six hours? Maybe that's a bigger driver for some people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a like it's we have a weird mix of users. We've noticed that like there are people that are doing it for their own personal like if they want to, and there's like weird gearheads that like aren't interested in getting better mileage. They just want to track it just to have data. Um, like you know, people are getting ten miles a gallon in some gas guzzler, that are, and they're they're fine with it, they're kind of joke about it. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, they should have other motivations besides pure economics. Yeah. Curious. <laughs> A suggestion that just occurred to me. Um, if you felt like working on your site anymore, it could be cool to have something where people put in when they do scheduled maintenance. Yeah. And if they miss the scheduled maintenance, what happens to the vehicle a few years later? It would be a, like a very strong motivator, and it might actually give some interesting information about what maintenance checkups are really necessary and what the consequences are. Yeah, I've seen it with my wife's car. We sort of we, uh, tracked her fill up for the last. It's been around for two years. There's sort of a step function of like her fuel efficiency, and it's like some O2 sensor went out. But we could just see it was like 36, and it was 30. Uh, so yeah, there are we have the meaning to put like maintenance records in there, and also have it bug you and remind you. Cool. Did you mash it up with location data and see like exactly where it's going? Because that's how people drive. Yeah, we've been talking about like maybe doing. Like force for check-ins at that you can also report on the gas station you're at and how much you paid and do the whole gas buddy like where the cheapest gas is. Um, we do capture location on like the web app on the iPhone, but we haven't even exposed that data anywhere. People are like worried about everything being public about like my wife has seen that I was in Charlotte instead of Valley and <laughs> <laughs> so we, we were like, there's no data protection here. You have to know. Maybe I just understood this, but I'm trying to understand. Like, the people that are using their site ostensibly want to change their, some of them want to change their driving behavior. Some of them just like gearhead, like you're saying. So for the ones that want to change their behavior, um, do you have some stories or examples of people that did and what, what caused that? Or what, what the difference between those who did change it? Was it like the delta of the, the, the MPGs or was it something else? Um, well, there are other things on the side I didn't show, like we have a whole bunch of tips sections, so like every page view, there's sort of like a, one driving tip to help save fuel. And ultimately, like I'm a cyclist, I'd rather not even own a car, but kind of have to. And I would hope you know, most of the people on the site are driving less and less. I think we've, we've heard like, anecdotal stories from lots of people that said just once they started measuring it, they started paying attention to it, and they sort of started trying to do a little better. And I mean, the site's riddled with like, you know, don't jack right at start, and downshift like this way, and take corners like this, and stuff. And there's a whole forum. To, yeah, go ahead, here. So, I talk a little bit more about that, because that was really interesting what you just said. People want to consume less gas, maybe spend less money. Yeah. Their driving pattern turns out to be a pretty poor way to attempt to do that because it's very costly mm -hmm. in terms of their attention. But driving less yeah. 
that's maybe a powerful way. And you're actually, are, you have that information about how much they drive implicitly, right? Yeah. So have you plotted any of that? And you ex experimented with like driving less as the kind of, um, as the dependent variable? Oh, I have not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I could do like, yeah, users over time and see how much driving. Yeah, you, you have, have a goal of driving less, yeah. you know, which is something you can change. Yeah, yeah. Like route planning, like things like route planning, we actually try to make a efficient pathway for your plan. Yeah, and even like one less trip a week. Yeah, probably. We're yeah. also thinking yeah. of doing like Nike Plus challenges, like between your three friends, like who can drive less or get one more mile per gallon yeah, yeah. more. It's all self-reported data, which is also kind of a bummer if people can budget. So we don't list everything by like most miles per gallon to know people gain it to be number one. Um, so we can screw it up. Yeah, we have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like from medical there, everyone gains everything at every angle, so I'm learning like what to do not say, say a couple of those lessons. Like what's the what's a real invitation for gaming? Uh, having any sort of leaderboard. <laughs> if you, if you, yeah, if you're listing of, uh, data points, just do it by something random or by date or something. And even by date, people will want to post like again and again to be at the top. But if you're gonna like measure points or something or any number, you just apply a number to people. They apply value to it. And then they want to be number one and hilarity yeah. ensues. So if, if the, the head of R and D were from Ford, right here, or pick your favorite yeah. part, that um, and, and if you had a piece of advice uh, for them that could impact their bottom line, anything come to mind? The only thing I think is I wish it, data entry was much easier and completely automatic. Like I wish. This using the site for a driver was about as easy as like me stepping on my Wi-Fi scale and you know I just wake up, step on it, it uploads to a server, I'm done. You know, I, I do wish uh, data entry was a lot easier. I mean, like my BMW has a G, GPRS phone connection that uploads data all the time and downloads data, but I don't know how you can save money for a port or something. So, one follow-up question. Sure. So on the with all the data that you have, do you think, well, your $6, I found frightening. Yeah. Okay. I so thought it would be like 20 bucks. Right. right. <laughs> Are there other financial metrics in terms of if you got people to drive less, would the value of the car be higher in reset? That's I mean, true. are there, are, are there, you we, buy we, tires less on Yeah, we came up with like a cost per mile for vehicles, we come just off of gas alone, yeah. your cost per mile, and it's only like a dime to make me 15 cents for most cars, so people don't think about that, like a dollar will take me to work and back. Let's take one question from all the way in the back, just to demonstrate that it's not all about the front. I saw a hand back there, somebody, yeah, go ahead, stand up and ask. Do you find any correlation in aggregate data Price of the car. Oh, we never did that. I mean, in 2008, we had lots of really passionate users when the gas was like 4, 30 a gallon, 450 a gallon, and it sort of trailed off. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I haven't looked at that data. I mean, this is sort of a side project that's like you know the equivalent of a 20% time project, where it's like once a week you look out for two hours. Um, but I did, I mean, when you look at the aggregate stats, they're incredible. Like, we tracked 262 million miles of driving or something in wow. two years. Um, yeah. And there's, there's lots of data mining we could be doing. We should be doing. Yeah. 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 Y